I'm Spook Summerhaze, and I love Zubat. Yes, yes, I know it's mid-October and Halloween is still a couple of weeks away. That said, I just spent a whole week doing Halloween lessons at the English school where I work. And this Pokemon is a bat. That's a kind of Halloweeny and spooky, right? It's certainly the spookiest, Halloweeniest Pokemon this month. So this is your Halloween episode. Deal with it. Or be doomed. A damp smell fills your nostrils, and a whistling wind assaults your ears. Your eyes blink, adjusting to the dark, as you take your first tentative steps into the cave. The ground is uneven, and you can barely see further than the ends of your own arms. Shapes and shadows seem to move on the periphery of your vision. Is that a rock, or is it alive? Is that the sound of water dripping in the distance, or of footsteps creeping up behind you? Overhead, rustling and squeaking and the flapping of leathery wings grows louder, from a distant melody on the wind into a cacophony. As you plunge deeper and deeper into the murky depths, the ceiling is not stone and moss, but a living, writhing mass. One of the creatures drops into an attack dive and flies to your jugulars. It's a Zubat. Your Pokemon fight it off, overcoming its poisonous attacks and devious attempts to leave them confused. You take another step. Another Zubat strikes, and you are locked again in combat for your very life. Five steps later, a third appears. This continues for your entire trip through the cave. Zubat is a small, blue and purple bat. Its name is a pun on the word bat, and the Japanese term Zubato, an onomatopoeia for the sound fangs make piercing the skin. It has no eyes, relying on echolocation for navigation. This is a commonly held childhood belief about real-life bats, although most species do actually have perfectly functional sight. It doesn't have legs as such, but two small appendages like tails, which it presumably hangs from ceilings while it sleeps. Zubat has a reputation among Pokemon fans for being, first and foremost, annoying. It is ever-present in all of the caves and tunnels and other dark underground locations we travel through on our adventures. Composer for this show, Jonathan Cromby, got in touch about that very subject. Zubat is widely loathed, and for good reason. While its design is unremarkable, surely there's no Pokemon we're more sick of the sight of. Bats are favourite animals of one of my best friends, Amelia. I got in contact with her to ask if that love extends to Zubat. The thing about Zubat that used to annoy when I was playing the video games was Supersonic. Every single Pokemon that I had would get confused, and I would have to wait for them to snap out confusion, or watch them hit themselves. It was especially annoying in the caves under Mount Moon in Pokemon Yellow where they would pop up every 10 seconds. I'm afraid Noibat has taken the place of my favourite bat Pokemon. Technically, the most common wild Pokemon encounter in the first generation games was Tentacool, as it was the only creature to crop up when surfing. Even within caves, I've never much minded ploughing through waves and waves of Zubat. Unlike its stablemates like Geodude and Machop, very few Pokemon I might be training are ineffective against Zubat. 
Whoever is in the number one spot on my party, they probably have a move that can grab them a few experience points from knocking a bat out of the sky. Alongside their ubiquity in caves, Zubat also have a strong association with Team Rocket. As poison type Pokemon with faintly monstrous overtones, they are a natural pick for the bad guys of the Pokemon world. This trend continues even beyond Kanto's infamous Yakuza archetypes. All throughout the series, members of villainous teams have wielded Zubats and its bigger siblings. Speaking of which, Zubat evolves into Golbat. It's a bigger bat with a comically large mouth. Particularly in the first generation sprite artwork, Golbat's mouth takes up such an outrageous percentage of its body that we step into ridiculous cartoon caricature territory. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Golbat is that it has eyes. Imagine living your whole life as a blind Zubat, developing an identity and sense of the world, and then suddenly gaining sight. Pokemon are consistently shown to have a pretty high level of intelligence and understanding. These bats have more than enough of a mind for it to be absolutely blown when this happens. Makes you think, huh? From the second generation onwards, the family gained a further evolution, and the coolest design of the three. Golbat evolves into Crobat through the power of friendship, slimming down into a sleek, multi-winged bat with some of the highest speed stats going. Happiness evolutions are a new concept in Generation 2, and I find it interesting that this family was given one. As I mentioned before, bats have villainous and monstrous associations, so it is a nice touch that the coolest and most powerful member of the family can only be acquired by a loving, friendly trainer. Crobat doesn't have the ridiculous mouth of Golbat, but it does have some terrifying bottom teeth. It is slick and cool and kind of cute, but it's still a terrifying blood-sucking bat monster. Crobat is definitely an improvement, and redeems the evolutionary family. This is the opinion of Jonathan Cromie at least, who says, Golbat at least is good for experience late main game, and has a faint vampire shtick going on, as well as some utterly horrifying sprite work. Crobat is blisteringly fast, and amusingly throwing star-like at times, my friend Amelia also pointed this out to me. It was also weird how it could carry Squirtle in the opening of the Pokemon anime theme. Squirtle would just magically stick to Zubat's underbelly. She's not wrong either. It's uh, been shared quite a lot on the internet as a meme, so go, do go and check out pictures of Zubat weirdly magnetically carrying Squirtle. My girlfriend Shen also loves Zubat, so much so that she carried one with her when she cosplayed as a member of Team Rocket some years back. She had this to say. I think I just like Zubat because I think it's cute, and I always put him on my team until he's just outclassed by the other Pokemon. And every time it happens I'm sad, because I want to keep him, but I can't, because he's too weak. And the spookiest boy of all, Andrew Rice, had this to say. Hello Luke loves Pokemon, it's me, fan of the show, Andrew Rice. I'm here today to discuss the frankly disgusting treatment of Zubat. People like to complain about him as if he's some sort of nuisance, but you're going into his house and just complaining that he's there. How would you like it if I came into your house and started moaning about your relatives? Yeah, you mug. Anyway, Zubat's alright, isn't he? He's a nice little bat. Just lives in a cave. Golbat is a bigger one, isn't it? So I guess people are more annoyed because he's even more in your way. I don't really know much about Crobat. I mean, he's he's there. I never had one, to be honest. People will probably continue to complain about walking into caves and encountering Zubats, as long as Pokemon games require them to walk through caves. Personally, I've never been overly annoyed by the little winged rodents. By the time they grow up into Crobats. I think they deserve to be counted alongside Bruce Wayne among the great contributions Batkind have made to the world. Music for Luke Loves Pokemon was created by Jonathan Cromie. Artwork for the show is by Katie Groves. If you're interested and you enjoy the show, please do give us a 5 star rating and review on iTunes, and share this podcast with your Pokemon loving friends. If you have anything to say about the next couple of Pokemon we'll be covering, Audition Paris, let me know all about it. I'm on Twitter and Facebook at Luke Loves PKMN. And you can email the show at lukelovespkmn at gmail.com. Happy Halloween. I love Zubat. And remember, I love you too.